welcome to god's word fellowship i'm gerald santiago and we are studying about right in his sight let's pray father we pray in the name of our lord jesus father we thank you so much for your glorious help for us father you are our maker our creator father you are the maker of heaven and earth father you are el shaddai the lord almighty father you are the only wise god wisdom and might are yours father we look to you we set our eyes upon you father we pray you teach us your word father we pray you grant us wisdom knowledge understanding and revelation in your word your will and your love father we pray you grant us ideas concepts and insights father we pray you show us great and mighty things we do not know father we pray you show us wonderful things out of your word father we thank you for word in due season father we thank you for answers and solutions father we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child jesus father we pray your healing power drive out every form of sickness and every form of disease father we pray your anointing break every yoke remove every burden and break every chain father we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers father in the name of our lord jesus we pray amen hallelujah hallelujah to jesus we serve a wonderful god we serve an awesome god hallelujah Hallelujah to Jesus. And um let's go to our text today. Go with me to 2 Kings chapter 21. Let's read the first two verses. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephzibah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. after the abominations of the heathen whom the lord cast out before the children of israel notice every phrase every part of this verse it's so very important manasseh did what he did evil in the sight of the lord in his eyes it was good it was right it was okay but in the sight of god it was evil in the sight of the heathen nations that were around him it was right it was good it was even desirable it was great it was praiseworthy but in the sight of god it was evil hallelujah hallelujah to jesus let's go to chapter 22 the just the next chapter and let's read verse 1 and verse 2 Josiah was 8 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 30 and 1 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Jedada the daughter of Adaiah of Boscat and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of david his father and turn not aside to the right hand or to the left hallelujah hallelujah to jesus what josiah did was not just merely right in his eyes he did that which was right in the eyes of the lord that's the thing who is going to say what is right and what is wrong is it you and me is it each individual on this planet is it a king of a nation is it the leader of the nation is it the government which is going to tell you what is right and what is wrong is it the political figures or the leaders in various industries or is it the media personalities or is it actors and actresses who is going to determine what is right and what is wrong it is only the almighty god it may be right in your eyes it may be right in my eyes it may be right in the eyes of the world and all those who live in it 
But if it is wrong in the eyes of the Lord, then it is wrong. It may be wrong in the eyes of the whole world. You may think it is wrong. I may think it is wrong. But if God says it is right, then it is right. That's the thing we need to understand in these, in these days, in this particular age. That's something you should know all the time. But particularly in this time and age, you better get to know this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now notice this. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And then the Bible says something else. In both these verses concerning Manasseh, it said he did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord, in the sight of the Lord. And then it adds something. It says, he did according to the abominations of the heathen. So he was walking after the heathen nations. There is a term for that in the word, in the New Testament. Walking after the world. That's why you have a very specific commandment in the Bible that says, do not be conformed to the patterns of the world. That's why you also have a very specific commandment given by the Apostle John. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. But then talking about Josiah, he is saying, he walked in the ways of David his father. Just go back to the previous chapter, chapter 21. And if you look at the very end, Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. You have Ammon, who was 22 years old when he began to reign. After This is after uh, Manasseh. He reigned only two years in Jerusalem. Right? And he again did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And um, he forsook the Lord God of his fathers. And after Ammon died, then came Josiah, his son. Right? He became king in his stead. Ammon and Manasseh were his immediate ancestors. Ammon and Manasseh. Hallelujah father grandfather but then notice god didn't say he walked in the ways of his fathers or in the walked in the ways of uh, uh, manasseh whom is god going back to the ways of david the ways of david that's very important to understand who are you walking after all of us are walking after somebody all of us you and me and everybody else in the world. Right? We are walking after somebody. We are doing something that is right in the eyes of someone. But who is that someone? Right? That, that's a very important question you need to ask yourself. The Bible very specifically teaches not to be wise in your own eyes. Can I do everything that is right in my eyes? Is it the right thing to do? Go with me to Proverbs. Proverbs. Hallelujah to Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3. Let's look at this particular verse. In Proverbs chapter 3, the Bible says, verse 7, Be not wise in your own eyes. What does that mean? Wise in your own eyes. Right? You are saying that even though God says this is wrong, I think it is right. Even though God says it is right, I think it is wrong. When you take such a stand, you are wise in your own eyes. You think you know better. You think you know more than God. When an individual does that, when they contradict God, they are being wise in their own eyes. Do you see this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And the Bible very specifically says, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. If God says this is wrong, fear God, have reverence for God, have respect for God, have honor for God, listen to what He is saying, humble yourself before Him and walk away from that. 
If God says evil, have nothing to do with it. Go with me to First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, chapter five, and um, go with me to verse. Um, hallelujah to Jesus. Verse twenty-one. Prove all things. That means test all things, right? Prove is um, you know King James uh, Old English, right? It actually means test all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Hallelujah. What is he saying? Test everything. When you hear something, when somebody is saying something, when you read something, when you hear something, right? When you are discussing something, when you get a bright idea, test it. Is it good? Is it evil? Is it right in the eyes of God? Sounds good to me, but does it sound good to God? Sounds right in my. Sounds right to me. I think it is right in my eyes. It is right, but is it right in the sight of God? Sounds great, even noble or honorable to me. But is this right in the eyes of God? Is this wise? Is this according to wisdom? Or is, is it just a feel-good foolishness? What is this? You have to judge. You have to test. You can't just take everything at face value. The prudent people don't. We are God's children. When you hear something, when you read something, when, when, when you study something, when somebody is, is, is giving, up their, giving out their opinions, whoever it is, right? You are supposed to test it and hold fast to good and abstain from all appearance of evil. You know what he is talking about here? If you go back and look at the context, he is talking about inspirational sayings by the Holy Spirit. Right? Right? When somebody is speaking by the Holy Spirit, you, you should test what they are saying because man, the vessel through which the gifts are operating is not perfect. And somebody, that vessel can make a mistake. He may think he is hearing the Holy Spirit and he may make a mistake because he is not perfect. He is not yet mature enough to, you know, uh, discern things or he might just make a mistake and because these gifts are functioning through a vessel which is not perfect which is defective in certain areas or in certain manners we need to test everything <laughs> hallelujah you know the bible says when some when when uh, the gifts of the holy spirit are functioning this is not the only place the bible teaches this in the New Testament itself, if you just go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and then this is a gift that is talking about um, uh, the importance of uh, prophesying and uh, uh, tongues and the interpretation and how they work, where you should use it, where you should not use it, how you should use it and so on. Right? And while talking about that, Paul is giving them a certain uh, order by which to function. And these people, the Corinthian church was, was great when it comes to um, operating in the Holy Spirit. So, let's read from verse 26. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you has a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. So, all of them have something because they are all praying in tongues, spending time with God. So, everybody received something from God. They received a psalm, they received a doctrine, somebody received a tongue, somebody got a revelation, somebody has an interpretation in his heart, right? They got and they all want to, you know, bring it to the church. So he's saying, since you guys are, all of you are, you know, receiving things from God, uh, present it in a way that it is edifying, right? And then he, he talks about uh, 
the interpreter giving the num uh, one believer speaking in tongue or a servant of god speaking in tongue and uh, others interpreting it right and then he talks about the prophets verse 29 let the prophets speak two or three notice he is saying prophets meaning these are genuine people called by god anointed by god speaking by the holy spirit two or three these are genuine attested people right functioning inside the church we are not talking about a false prophet we are not talking about some crazy fellow right these are men of god called by god anointed by god speaking within the setup of the church right and let the other judge <laughs> he's saying let them speak and let the other judge judge what judge whether what is being spoken is according to god's word or not hallelujah if a man of god called by god anointed by god standing in the office of a prophet if his words should be judged how much more than every everybody else how much more a industrialist or a media personality or an actor or an actress or a politician or a government servant or whoever else it is or a social media influencer right whoever it is if a prophet of god should be judged if the words of a prophet of god i'm sorry right if the words of a prophet of god should be judged how much more the words of the people in the world if we have to test everything that we believe is the inspiration of the holy spirit if we have to test that how much more more what you are hearing in the world how much more we can't just take everything at face value and say okay he has good intentions he is saying with an intention to help people so it has to be good not necessarily not necessarily good intentions don't make something good there are a lot of things people with good intentions have said which are wrong which have produced uh, dangerous results which have destroyed lives do you understand this na eh? good intentions noble intentions don't make a deed or an ideology good all those deeds and all those ideologies and all those world views have to be tested against god's word you have to examine them in the light of god's word because it may sound good to them it may sound good to you but does it sound good to god is it right in his eyes that's the question here and that's the standard by which you and i will be judged and that's the standard by which god operates in our life do you understand this hallelujah hallelujah to jesus the two people you know, yesterday i mentioned this but i didn't dive deep into this so uh, let's look into these things look at um, these two people our texts they, they were it's um, these statements and these verses are uh, talking about kings now in those days kings were absolute authorities what they said goes if the if the king says okay we are not going to do this anymore then the entire nation has to obey rebellion will be met with severe retribution and many times it would mean death right they 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 these are we are not talking about a, a, a liberal democratic society here na right? we we are not talking about um, in a today's world this was an a, a, a kingdom and the word of the king is the law so in the case of manasse he is doing things which was right in his sight which he thought was good which he wanted which he desired right and he is the king of the nation so you know common opinion is if the king wants it hey he gets it right 
if he if he says this is what we are going to do then that's what we are going to do hmm and it also says that the king was doing things that other nations were doing hallelujah let's go back to that verse go with me to first king i'm sorry second kings chapter 21 what was manasse doing he was doing things that the other nations he then meaning the those nations which don't know god which don't have a relationship with god these are people outside the covenant so the nations around him they were doing the same thing that manasse was doing in fact he was imitating them hallelujah so it was right in the eyes of manasse it was right in the eyes of the rest of the world but it was not right in the eyes of god in the eyes of god these things were evil evil hallelujah so a king doesn't get to decide what is right and what is evil the king may do it the king may say it is good the king may find joy in doing it but even if a king who has absolute authority does something it still does not make it right it still does not make it good the only person who decides what is right and what is evil what is good and what is evil is god almighty even the king doesn't have the authority and doesn't get to decide what is good what is evil what is right what is wrong hallelujah hallelujah to jesus hallelujah this is important for us to know very very important for us to know now let, let me show you some examples here right we are talking about manasse and josiah let let me show you some somebody who was dear to god's heart now we we talked about how josiah walked in the ways of david his father see david is the gold standard for a king <laughs> right if you are a king god is going to measure you against the ways of david how do you stack up against david that's how god is going to measure you right <coughs> so this david who is the example for for kings rulers leaders right even he failed in his life now you have to think about david david is is a man after god's own heart <coughs> david meditated in the word of god day and night he sought god diligently he had a great desire for the presence of god right as soon as you now once he became king he he went after the ark of god brought it into his city so that it will be near by him right and after he was established you know you would if you study the bible you would see that at, you know kings after they are strengthened they would forsake god they would forget god as long as you know they are in danger and they have trouble they would look to god they will pray they will seek god fervently and god would help them but once they become strong and they are strengthened right they forsake god's ways but david after he was established and strengthened instead of forsaking god he thought about building a temple for god even though god never told him to right he desired it he he desired god's presence so much he valued the things of god so much that he he wanted to build a temple for god this is the man whom god himself says this boy is after my own heart he will do all my will hmm? even david in a moment of weakness yielded to the flesh committed adultery killed the woman's husband and he went one year close to one year without repenting from it a prophet had to come and confront him before he repented hmm hallelujah if david can make mistakes like that what about the rulers of today the leaders of today and the public personalities of today do you think they are perfect do you think you can imitate everything they do and say hmm 
Hallelujah. Go to First Chronicles chapter 21. Let's read from verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. What does that mean? See, Satan wanted to harm Israel. He wanted to bring destruction in Israel. And Israel is being protected by God. Right? So, he wanted to provoke them to sin so that uh, the judgment of God would come upon Israel. You can see the same ploy of the devil in the numbers. Right? Moab, the king of Moab, tries to, wanted to uh, weaken Israel. So, he calls um, Balaam to come and curse Israel. But Balaam says, you know, I can't curse the people whom God has blessed. And God would not allow Balaam to curse Israel. And so, because Balaam desired money, he coveted money. He was a greedy fellow. Right? So, he gives an advice to the Moabian king. See, I can't curse Israel because God has stopped me from doing that. But you can do this. Send your women to seduce them and make them do idolatry. If, if you can do that, then the judgment of God would come upon them. Right? That's the trick of the enemy. He can't hurt God's people directly, so make them sin so that God's wrath would come. Right? And the devil is using the same ploy here. Right? And uh, verse 2, David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan, and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. So here we see, you know, David is commanding something that is against God's word. God had forbidden Israel from doing this. See, God wanted to be the strength of Israel, right? Not the might of the army or the uh, greatness of um, the army, right? And verse 3, And Job answered, The Lord make his people an hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord the King, are they not all my Lord's servants? When, why then does my Lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? This is the king commanding. On top of it, this is David, the man after God's own heart, commanding this. Yet, what David did at this moment, in this point, was wrong. And it was a trespass against God. David thought this is okay in a moment of weakness. Hmm? But in the eyes of God, it was still sin. God didn't change his mind just because David was doing this. Do you understand this? And Joab understood this and he is saying this to David. This would cause Israel to sin. Let's not do this. But notice, Verse 4, Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab, and the census was done, and uh, the people were numbered, and it brought judgment upon Israel. Just because David approved it, doesn't mean God will approve it. Just because David thought this was right, doesn't mean God will say, Okay, David is saying, my, my favorite boy, so l let this be right. No. Do you see this? Hallelujah. It's so important to understand and evaluate our actions, our deeds and uh, our opinions and world views and what we subscribe to. Right? We have to examine the, these things in the light of God's word. We should examine and see whether this is okay in God's sight. Not just in our sight. We have to look at them and determine whether they are okay in God's sight. Hallelujah. See, it is in God's ways we have protection, we have blessing, we have all of God's blessings. Right? So we should be careful to order our lives, our world views according to God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. We will talk more about this in the next message. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon.